Hi, I'm Khaled from Oski Pass and welcome to this video. Uh, this is your step-by-step -step guide to taking blood using the Vacutainer system. Let's get started. So when do we do bloods and why? It could be as part of your routine bloods to monitor treatment and to help guide your diagnosis. Preoperative bloods such as group and save and cross-matching toxicology bloods, for example, paracetamol levels, or monitoring medication levels, your vancomycin, gentamicin levels, or the acutely unwell patient. You could be doing it as part of your uh, septic screen workup, which would be your sort of normal bloods, your inflammatory markers, and then microbiology bloods as well, uh, blood cultures. Okay, so on to the introduction. It's important to have a nice, slick introduction where you explain who you are, what you have come to do, the fact that it can be painful. You can say it can feel like a sharp scratch. And then to gain consent and to check the patient's details. A good tip is that you could ask the patient where people have taken blood from before and have been successful. This saves you a bit of time looking around. So getting your equipment ready, it's a good idea to just get it ready before you go to the patient. Uh, saves on faffing around near the patient, which can create a bit of anxiety. Um, you've already got your things ready. It was going to look slick because you arrive and you can crack on with the job. The positioning of the arm is really important and it's important that if you are going for the antecubital fossa, the arm is nice and straight. So often um, popping a pillow below it is really useful. You have to be comfortable yourself in your positioning and the positioning of the patient's arm. A good tip would be to put an inker pad below the arm so that if there is a bit of blood that comes off the arm, it's not going to stain the pillow. Once you're happy with the position, apply the tourniquet. Um, this is a better technique to tying it because you can actually release it with one hand. Really important when you're anchoring the needle and you need to release the tourniquet. Okay, so the next part is trying to find the right vein to take blood from. This can be more of an art than something simple to teach, but uh, the, the important techniques essentially are that you have to feel along the course of the vein, um, trying to find the direction of the vein. It's more about what you can feel rather than what you can see. Um, so those are really important things to bear in mind. Once you've chosen the vein you want to go for, give the area clean with a chlorhexidine wipe. Get your needle ready with the bevel side facing up. Go in at about a 20 degree angle, making sure that with your non-dominant hand, you're holding the skin taut. This helps anchor the vein that you're going into. As you go into the vein, you will feel it kind of give, and that is your cue to get the blood bottles ready. Uh, start taking your blood. Now, we've accidentally put on the other side. If you're right-handed, put it on your right side. Make it easier for yourself. Make life easy. And take your blood um, anchor the needle with your non-dominant hand and don't move try to keep it as stable as possible um, and once you've taken your blood before retracting the needle important 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 to take the tourniquet off so if you don't do that it could lead to quite messy situations um, so tourniquet off and then needle out and once you've done that Ask the patient to apply pressure for a few minutes there. If there's bleeding or a hematoma to let somebody know. Dispose your sharps, thank the patient, and then you're done. That's it, guys. And if you want to see more videos to help you pass your OSCEs, subscribe, like, and we'll see you on another day.